Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla News, episode 137. Tesla is planning to double their vehicle sales in Germany in 2022. Mercedes-Benz unveiled its longest range electric truck yet. And Volkswagen might have more trouble coming for them. And Honda doesn't really seem to be getting the memo. And Jay Leno had some praising words for Elon Musk after his interview. And the Tesla Model 3 wins a new award. And Tesla's production ramp is looking like warp speed. All this and much, much more on today's episode. Let's dive right in. Tesla has really gotten the Shanghai factory up and running at full speed. And Tesla's full speed is like warp speed compared to the competition. Tesla continues to shorten the wait time for most models in China, making the expected delivery cycle for all models start at one week. Some might say this is because their sales are collapsing, but I would disagree on that one. As the numbers Tesla is making are insane. As we know, Tesla should be able to produce more than 80,000 units in September, maybe as high as 84,000 units. And will hardly export any units from China in September. As we know, last September, Tesla only exported 3,853 units. So Tesla could potentially deliver more than 8,000 units this month in China, as they also have a little backlog of cars from the previous months. So Tesla could sell more cars in China in September than the entire Volkswagen Group sold in China in the first half of 2022. Even though Volkswagen tripled their numbers of BEV sold in China in the first half of 2022, they have only sold 63,500 in the first six months in China. And Tesla might deliver 80,000 units in one month. This is more than the entire Volkswagen Group sold in China in all of 2021. This should put it in a little perspective, just how big Tesla's numbers are becoming and why Tesla is able to bring down their delivery times to one to 10 weeks. And this should also persuade many buyers into buying a Tesla compared to many other brands, as many other brands have a very long wait time, some up to a year because they can't produce enough units but have a lot of models, just as I experienced here in Denmark when I was at the Made in German Model Y delivery event in Aarhus, Denmark. One of the guys picking up a Tesla Model Y actually bought an Audi Q4 e-tron. But as the wait time was over one year and he could get the Tesla within two months, he cancelled his already ordered Audi and bought a Tesla instead, purely because he could get it faster. This is also a very good example of why it is so important to keep your backlog and wait time in check and why Tesla has been raising prices in many places to not get the wait time to be too long. But now Tesla is really hitting some insane production rates in China that will make the wait time in the month they don't export very, very short in China. And analyst Alexander Potter from Piper Sandler also think this is a very big deal for Tesla. Because this also shows that Tesla has solved their supply chain issues. While other OEMs are still struggling, as he said, while other brands continue to struggle to ramp production, Tesla will presumably start cutting prices, thereby boosting market share at everyone else's expense. If Tesla's upstream supply bottlenecks truly are breaking, we think it is a scary perspective for other brands. Oh yes, indeed. And we have also just heard that Ford say that they estimate they will have 40 to 45,000 vehicles in inventory lacking parts, which will delay sales. 
Those vehicles are largely high-margin truck SUVs, Ford said, and said it anticipates third-quarter adjusted EBIT to be between $1.4 to $1.7 billion. Ford declined to say what parts of the vehicles they were lacking, but it clearly shows us exactly what Piper Sandler was talking about. Tesla seems to have solved their supply chain issue, but someone like Ford is still struggling, and their stock dropped dramatically on that news. Actually, the biggest drop for Ford stock in 11 years. And with the big ramp in production for Tesla, and not only at the Shanghai factory, but hopefully also at Texas and Berlin, we should soon see wait time fall across the board, making a Tesla the obvious choice if you don't want to wait a year on your EV. And here, in most of Europe, the wait time right now for the 3 or Y is still November to December or January to March, so not too bad compared to the competition. Even though Tesla is still the brand that has sold the most EVs in Europe, even beating the Volkswagen brand with more than 25%. So all in all, we could see a very good quarter for Tesla in Q3, with maybe something like 350,000 units sold, give or take. So adding maybe close to 15% on their previous all-time high of 310,000 units. And then comes the bag, Q4. That would be a monster of a quarter. That quarter could become as big as Tesla was in all of 2020, only two years ago. <laughs> we could possibly see about 500,000 units sold in Q4, with all factories firing on all cylinders, so to speak. And I will bet you guys watching are spending a fair amount of time online on your connected devices. I know I am. My job is being on a computer all day long. And when I'm not working, I might be streaming some entertainment on some of my smart devices. And all my personal information is on my smartphone. That is why a VPN is a very good thing. Thing and why I have partnered with today's sponsor, NordVPN. Because a VPN stands for a virtual private network. And private being the key word there. A VPN will encrypt your internet traffic and hide your IP address and virtual location. So it will boost your privacy and security online, which is much needed these days. And a VPN protection makes hacking close to impossible. And two weeks ago, I was in the US at the Fully Charged Live Show using public available Wi-Fi. But I of course don't know how secure the connection is, but that is not a problem, as I just run NordVPN to make sure my connection stays private and secure. And while I'm over here in the US, I can still stream my Danish streaming service, as I can just change my IP address to be in Denmark, even though I was at the Fully Chance Live Show in San Diego. And the user interface of NordVPN is just so simple. You just click the country you want your IP address to be in, and that is it. It couldn't be any simpler. If you want to check it out, and you should if you care about your online privacy and security, NordVPN has a great deal right now. Go to this link also in the description below, nordvpn.com slash bestintesla to get a two-year plan with an exclusive deal, huge discount, plus four bonus months for free. And it's risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guaranteed, so you have nothing to lose. So click the link in the description to get started today. And a big thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Mercedes-Benz unveiled its longest range electric truck yet. At IAA last weekend, the automaker unveiled the e-Ectra long haul for the first time and released more specs. And as I made a couple of videos about, this really just showed the advantages Tesla has, as the long haul truck from Mercedes will only have about 310 miles of range according to Mercedes themselves, where the Tesla Semi truck would have 500 miles of range. And as we have heard from many test drivers, it is probably closer to 600 miles than 500 miles. So it does sound like the Tesla Semi truck could 
come with something like double the range than the Mercedes long haul truck. But Mercedes can charge it pretty quickly compared to the other models we have seen so far that takes four hours to charge. This one should be able to charge under 30 minutes from 20 to 30 percent. So that is pretty good. So gaining about 186 miles of range in 30 minutes. It does of course not be tested 350 miles of range in just 30 minutes. So Tesla can also add on double the amount of range in just 30 minutes. And Elon has said that the Tesla semi truck will start shipping this year. And with the news about Tesla having enough batteries for both their cars and energy business for the first time ever, it does seem possible that now we will finally see the semi truck in action. As the Texas factory also gains some momentum in the production of the 4680 cells. So it will be exciting to see what the price of the Mercedes long haul truck will be because with the Tesla semi truck that seems to come to market about a year before Mercedes long haul truck that will have about twice the range and twice the charging speed and Tesla will again make their own charging network for the semi truck with the mega charges. I have not heard that about Mercedes though. So it has to be a bit cheaper than Tesla's $180,000 for their long haul truck or closer to the price of the 300 miles range smaller Tesla semi truck with a price tag of $150,000. Was the price before they stopped taking orders, so we will see if the price will stay the same when they open up for orders again. But anyway, I still think Mercedes is going to have a tough time coming out with an inferior semi truck one year later than Tesla. I think most trucking companies are just going to want to have a Tesla instead, where you will get much more value for money. But we have to wait and see how this all plays out. Volkswagen might have some trouble coming for them and they are coming from China. We have heard about Tesla killers for about a decade now. No one killed Tesla, but some of the killers have actually been killed off. So that clearly didn't turn out as the short sellers and haters thought it would. But now we might have a bit of a killer coming to Europe. But it's not coming for Tesla, but for Volkswagen and to be very specific, the Volkswagen ID3. We have been talking about the Chinese coming for a long time and that is really starting to come true as I can now buy the MG4 in my country. And that is a very decent electric car with a very good price. It is not a big SUV as most other EVs that are coming out these days. It is a nice size family car, not for a big family, but just an all in all nice normal kind of hatchback car, just like the ID3. And it does match the ID3 on pretty much all specs. Same kind of range, same kind of charging speed, same kind of performance in general, but the starting price of the MG4 here in Denmark is about the equivalent of $10,000 cheaper than the ID3. And you will probably get even better software with the MG4 and it can actually tow a little trailer or bike rack of up to 500 kilos. The ID3 cannot tow a trailer. And next year they will come out with a little sporty version of the MG4 that can do a 0 to 60 in under 4 seconds. You can't get an ID3 that can do that. You can't even get a Volkswagen branded EV that can do that. So when it comes to the US, you can probably expect this one to cost about $30,000. It starts about £26,000 in the UK, again about £10,000 cheaper than the ID3. I am sorry, but I don't see why anyone would choose the ID3 over this one. The ID3 doesn't have anything the MG4 doesn't have, but the MG4 does have stuff the ID3 doesn't have, like the vehicle to grid. It can charge other application or run electric barbecue or electric tools. So this is the first really good look at what we have been talking about when we have been saying the Chinese are coming. This one beats the ID3 its European legacy automaker's counterpart on pretty much all specs, but also save you about $10,000 on the sticker price. I really think you have to be a hardcore Volkswagen fan for not going for the MG4. Also because 
This is the fourth version of the MG they are bringing to life, so they already have better experience than Volkswagen has. The ID3 is still the first truly EV they made on the MEB platform and still have some other software box. And MG is exporting 10,000 of these cars as we speak to 20 countries and expect to be in over 100 countries next year with this car. So a really fast ramp to really high volumes. This could be a really big hit. It even beats the very popular Kia Niro on price with about seven to eight thousand dollars. The Niro is of course a bigger car, but one huge mistake Kia has made with the new much better looking Niro that is still a great EV is they have only given it 80 kilowatts charging speed. That just feels very outdated. So I do think that could hurt the car a bit as this is a low charging speed compared to pretty much anything else out there except the GM's Bolt of course that can only charge with 50 kilowatt. And again, this car will also come to the US and only be a couple of thousand dollars more expensive than the outdated Bolt. Yeah, GM will probably have some trouble selling their Bolt if people can get their hands on this car just as fast. So again, I think the MG4 could be a really big smash hit on the streets around the world and could really hurt Volkswagen's ID3 sales. Also because Volkswagen Group itself is also making it harder for the Volkswagen branded ID3 as they have come out with a nice Cobra Born. Here in Denmark, with the models we have available of the ID3 and the Cobra, the Cobra is about $4,000 cheaper than the ID3. But the Cobra is pretty much just an ID3 in disguise. But in my personal opinion, a better looking and more sporty looking disguise. And you can get some more luxury features inside the Cobra like massaging seats. So here Volkswagen is not really thinking about the product range architecture as I made a whole video about, but eating into its own sales of the ID3 with their own Cobra Bond. And then we have the MG4 coming in pretty high volume this year and very high volume next year, I think Volkswagen should look out for this EV because this is the second step from the Chinese. They have already come over with nice more expensive EVs like the Polestar, Neo, Xping in smaller volumes. But now the more affordable EVs are coming in high volumes, the car that people have been screaming about. But not like the original MG that came out a couple of years back that had a lot of compromises and not a very long range of charging speed. But the nice updated one here that can master European legacy automakers EVs on every specs, just cheaper. Yes, we are truly seeing the first steps of the Chinese invasion. And it looks like it could really hurt someone like Volkswagen. Honda doesn't really seem to be getting the memo. As the vice president just said, we, Honda, don't really believe that the current lithium ion technology is a long term solution. Solid state batteries are going to be the game changer for us. Well, I think Honda is missing the whole point here. And that is that the car market will be pretty much all EVs by 2030. And we will not have anyone with high volume production of affordable solid state batteries before that as we have not seen anyone announce bigger plans than QuantumScape. They expect to have about 90 gigawatt hours ready for their solid state in 2028, if everything goes right. This is like a drop in the sea compared to all the other battery chemistries that will be out. Just Tesla expects to have 3000 gigawatt hours of battery produced at that point. But more importantly is the timing. If Honda is waiting for the solid state battery, what do they expect to be selling by the end of this decade? Because it will not be ice cars. So they can't just wait and sell nothing until their magic solid state battery comes along in high volume with low price. As we see right now, the LFP batteries are actually starting to win market share as they are getting very good in energy density. But most importantly, they are cheaper. I think it will be a while before solid state battery will become as cheap to manufacture as lithium ion batteries as it is a new technology. And maybe this is why Honda is also saying that they don't think that EVs will ever be cheaper than their ICE cars. 
I think this will age very poorly, as I do think by mid-decade EVs will be far cheaper than the ICE cars. We also have to remember it is not only the EVs that is rising, it is also the ICE cars that are collapsing. That also means less demand for the ICE cars, so the prices for these cars will also start to go up again, as nobody wants to buy them anymore. But EVs on their own are also becoming cheaper by the minute. As we just learned last week, the price for Tesla to produce an EV has come down from $84,000 to $36,000 in only five years years and that will only continue to go down as we get more economy of scale and start to get the price benefits of Tesla's 4680 cells that they are still only producing in very small volume. So I'm willing to bet Honda's vice president on this one. EVs will become cheaper than ICE cars mid-decade. Solid state batteries are too far out for them to have an impact on the switch to EVs, but will probably be a nice new technology that can be implemented into the EV market share after the switch has happened. So if you're not in the switch, you won't be there at all. And the vice president even admits that solid state batteries are still a while away. So this just clearly shows us that Honda has no clue of just how fast this transition is happening. So they have to get on the train now. Sure, the future of batteries might be solid state, but that doesn't really matter if you're not even on a train, but got left behind at the station for bankruptcy. This will not end well for Honda if this is truly their strategy. And Jay Leno did an interview after he had Elon Musk on the show, which I will leave a link to down below. Definitely check that one out. And Jay Leno had this to say about Elon Musk. He's a dreamer where the dream actually comes true. You know, I first met Elon back in 2007 and he came by with his Tesla Roadster. And I remember he said to me, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to build these charging stations all up and down the coast and hopefully all across America. I, I mean, I thought it was interesting, but like most people I meet, it never comes to fruition. And yeah, that's what he did. He was building those, the infrastructure as he was building the product. You, he you, knows manufacturing. Yeah. And that's what I admire uh, about Elon. You know, when we were down there, he was explaining the manufacturing process. I remember he said it cost a billion dollars to put one gallon of water on Mars. He wants to get it down to $100,000 a gallon. He's a practical thinker. He understands manufacturing. He understands mm -hmm. supply chain. I mean, he, he built that whole place down there in two and a half years. The thing I found fascinating about Elon, he doesn't believe in patents. He, mm -hmm. You're competitive. If, if you've got a good product, let everybody use it. Because his thing is to get the electric car ethos out there, get everybody understanding how mm -hmm. it works. And the more manufacturers there are and the more people getting in on the game, the better it is for him. He's already the, if not the richest guy in the world, okay, the second richest guy in the world. So. He doesn't think like a billionaire. There's no giant yacht. There's no mansions all over the world. When I went down to visit him, he had his little um, Airstream trailer <laughs> in the parking lot. That's of, amazing. Uh, of, and that's where he lived. Yeah. I mean, that's where he lived. But the most fascinating part was he wants to build a thousand rockets to go to Mars. And you go, okay, that sounds like some bad 1953 science fiction movie. But then you go into SpaceX and you see hundreds and hundreds of huge, most the most powerful uh, rocket engines in the world lined up there and you realize, okay, this is gonna happen like all mm -hmm. the other things he said mm -hmm. would happen. You, you know, so yeah, you it, he's a dreamer who actually fulfills a dream. Yes, Elon does come true on his promises. Maybe not always on time, but he always comes true. Elon always get a lot of hate on this, but do you remember Volkswagen's claim back in 2017 when they said they would have 20 EV models by 2020 as a brand and GM should have 20 EV models by next month, according to them back in 2017. No one of them is even close on delivering what they said they would. Tesla is getting really close now with the semi truck launching at the end of this year and the cyber truck within the next eight months or so, and maybe even the long awaited Roadster. And no one of the other didn't even have to build as much as one charging stall. Tesla has built out almost 40,000 charging stalls by now. 
and built two new factories and is about to solve for self-driving, but the others never get any hate for their targeting being missed by miles. But if Tesla or Elon Musk is off by an inch of their EV target, it is in the news. But as Jay says, this is going to happen, just as all the other things he said would happen. He's a dreamer that fulfills the dream. And let's squeeze in the last short news topics into this new show. Yes, it's time for the Tesla shorts. Car of the year in Denmark 2020, the Tesla Model 3 has been named the used car of the year in 2022. For the first time, an electric car wins the title as the best used car purchase. Behind the award is a jury made up of car journalists and used car experts who look at overall economy, solidity and value for money in individual cars. Model 3 wins on elements such as lightning charging, you get a lot of car with high performance for the money and state of the art technology. It is difficult to think of a more modern and complete package than the Tesla Model 3, says one of the jury members. Not to mention the safest car in the world. Yeah, it is hard to find a better value for money, period. And we can now get all versions of the Model Y in Denmark as well, the new king of the hill in all of Europe. SpaceX has tested the capabilities of Starlink on a JSX original flight to see just how well the satellite's internet system performed in a moving vehicle at 30,000 feet in the air. And it turns out Starlink performs admirably, providing speeds of about 100 megabits per second for the plane's passengers. And Elon replied on Twitter, with some improvement it will achieve 300 megabits per second. Nice. And Starlink is now also active on all continents, including Antarctica. That is just very cool. And Jeff, one of my followers, shared his experience with Starlink for his business in San Diego. My shop was paying $560 per month for two T1 speeds of max 3 megabits per second. Well, that is some bad internet there. And we are talking about San Diego, not in the middle of Alaska here and now paying $110 per month, now run the entire shop of Starlink, computers, iPhone, etc. It is awesome. Nice. And another story about people trying out Tesla for the first time shared with me by another one of my followers as well as he wrote, I have a friend who recently bought a 2022 Mustang GT50 ice car. We got together in July for the first time since before COVID and he gave me a ride in his Mustang. Then I gave him a ride in my Tesla Model Y performance. He has never seen a Tesla up close, much less ridden one. And it is about $10,000 cheaper than his friend's Mustang, I might add. But he continued, I started out with chill mode and he was reasonably impressed. Then I said, okay, now let's go to sport mode. His reaction was amusing. He said this car was unbelievable believable and insanely cool. Anyway, he also said my car was too quiet, so I made him a little video. Dodge Challenger Hellcat. Replace the electric motors with a big ass V8. Yeah, I will take the acceleration over the noise any day. Volkswagen might increase the production of the ID bus as they see big demand for this car. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> they now have pre-orders of 12,500 units. Volkswagen can only produce about 100 units a day right now, but hope to increase that to 200 units by the end of this year. And then next year they will really ramp it up towards 100,000 so about 275 units a day. And they are targeting about 130,000 units a year when fully ramped up. And that sounds like that's going to be 2024. And as we can see James sharing on Twitter, even though BYD is growing really fast and has overtaken Volkswagen in BEV sold in 2022, they have not broken the code of growing their net profit as a percentage of their revenue. We can see it is actually going down a bit, while Tesla has just taken off in the last three years like a rocket. Can't wait to see the result of this one after 2022. And don't forget, next Friday on the 30th of September, Tesla will hold their AI Day 2. Can't wait. And GM's new marketing campaign, EVs for everyone, 
everywhere was first aired at the NFL last Sunday. So again, GM is spending millions on advertising, but what good will it do as no one can actually get these cars if they order them right now? This will probably just end up like the Super Bowl commercial that made Tesla's order spike after the EV commercials. And Tesla is adding another tent to the Fremont factory property, but it will not directly be used for production. Along with the new tent, Tesla has filed for several other things at Fremont, including Model S and X manufacturing line upgrades and an update to the battery equipment production line project we talked about a couple of weeks back. And Tesla Rati discovered that Tesla has officially filed a revised application with the city of Austin's housing and planning department on September the 20th. The city no noted that Tesla is proposing revision to previously approved site plans. Elon did later clarify to Tesla Rati that it was, as he wrote, area from the South Giga to the river really will be next level great and open to the public. Long term goal is a boardwalk with amenities that goes all the way downtown Austin so you can walk or bike or kayak. And maybe Tesla will rent small electric Tesla boats with a retro futuristic Victorian design, ecological paradise plans from the south portion of the Giga Texas to the river look Great. However, we must first get the factory financially on its feet. So they are still working on the plans to make it an ecological paradise. But of course, no plans to make that happen before the factory itself is up and running and actually making money. And Elon confirmed on Twitter, full self-driving beta 10.69.2.2 looks good, extended to 160,000 owners in the US and Canada. So out of the blue, with a click of a button, Tesla now have 60,000 more beta Teslas. This is not really appreciated how important this is. And the beta testers of the 10.69.2.2 is looking good, very good. And Holmos catalog wrote, Tesla's full self-driving beta 10.69.2.2 drives from the SpaceX rocket factory in Los Angeles to the Tesla car factory in California, parking lot to parking lot with zero takeovers. That is a four hour drive. Yeah, we're getting really close. Tesla is planning to double vehicle sales in Germany in 2022, German weekly Automobile Woche reported. Our goal is to double sales each year, which translates into about 80,000 units in 2022, the executive was quoted as saying. In 2021, Tesla sold almost 40,000 vehicles in Germany, where Tesla has built the first gigafactories in Europe in Grunheide. So Tesla will really ramp up during the last quarters of 2022, as I just made a whole video about the panic in Germany, because the ramp we have heard from Berlin and what Elon has been saying we are looking at about 50,000 more units coming out of the Berlin factory for the rest of the year. And we still have about seven ships coming from China to Europe as well. And there is still one ship that has just arrived in Europe and one on its way. And many more will come again in next quarter as they start exporting again from China. So the 50,000 is just from the Berlin factory and they are already about 25,000 units sold in Germany year to date. The Volkswagen brand has has a couple of thousand more, but has not a new factory ramping up. So don't think they will be able to keep up with this ramp Tesla is doing right now. So Tesla could become the best selling EV brand in Germany. A market the short sellers and haters said Tesla will never get because of all the German competition. Yeah, that aged well guys. And before we end off with a bit of fun, I just want to make a quick shout out to my newest patrons and members of this YouTube channel. My two new patrons, Gort and Manuel, and my new thank you for watching members, Terence Ponting, Talia Long, and Jared Peebles. Thank you so much for all your support. I am doing this all by myself, but you guys are all the producers of this new show. Thank you. And a big and special thanks to Support of the Week. And this week's winner is David White. David has been a thank you for watching member for more than 14 months. So thank you so much for all your support, David. Really, really appreciate it. Please contact me on this email down below so I can get your address so I can send you your free t-shirt or mug of your choice. And let's end off with a bit of fun. A little video showing how GM is solving problems. <laughs>
That is all we have time for in this new show. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Ah! Before you go, hit that like button. Thank you. <laughs> and if you did like it, maybe you want to consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell as well, so you don't miss out on future videos just like this one. If you are already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. And if you want to support the channel even more, remember you can for as little as $1, become a patron of this channel and get your shout out on this show. You can also become a member of the YouTube channel to get a shout out and some extra perks. Hit the members button to find out more. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I tweet all the news as it comes out and more. And check out the merch store to get some merchandise and support the show. Now it's also possible to support the show without buying anything, becoming a member or a patron. There is a link to a donation options in the show notes. And also as simple as hitting the super like button. But going forward, I will be making more videos for patrons and members only. And I will give my YouTube members and patrons early access to my videos whenever possible and make my videos ads free for members and patrons only. So don't mess out. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice.